Hello friends. So today I'll be talking on this uh, very simple topic, interpretation of iron study and treatment of iron deficiency anemia. So mainly as a tutorials uh, for trainees. So it sounds very simple, but it's good to have a good understanding as to how we interpret iron studies. I'm sure many in ICU would be doing iron studies. So it's a brief overview for all our trainees and uh, basic sort of uh, people who are undergoing training to have a clarity on iron deficiency anemia. So try to cover this in maybe seven to eight minutes. So as you would understand, iron deficiency anemia, which we call as IDA, is a most prevalent form of malnutrition. And 50% of the anemias are known to occur due to iron deficiency anemia. And as you would know, in iron deficiency, the striking feature is the microcytic hypochromic picture. So there'll be hypochromia and the microcytes and predominantly due to defect in hemoglobin synthesis. So there is a defect in uh, hemoglobin's delivery to the tissues. So the tissue hypoxia can later on set in in the advanced anemias. So there is failure of the red blood cells to produce hemoglobin and oxygen delivery to the tissues and that suffers in uh, iron deficiency anemia. So when we talk about iron studies to diagnose iron deficiency anemia, obviously you would do a peripheral smear, look at microcytic hypochromia and then you would do iron studies, right? So iron studies, there are four components that you would get. So you would be looking at serum iron, uh, total iron, then you would look at transferrin, total iron binding capacity, transferrin saturation and peritin. So these are the four to five elements that you would get in any iron study that you order. So when you look at total iron or serum iron, the normal level is 60 to 150 milligrams per deciliter. And basically it indicates the iron which is bound to the transferrin and only 0.1% is bound to the transferrin which is a protein. And these levels tend to fluctuate throughout the day uh, based on the binding to the transferrin. And Iron deficiency, the fall in the serum iron can happen due to iron deficiency or due to anemia of any chronic inflammatory disease. And these levels of the iron <clears throat> tends to fluctuate based on the cycling of the iron that happens. The predominant cycling of the iron happens from the bone marrow and from the reticuloendothelial macrophages. So this is where the iron tends to get recycled and these, that's why these levels tend to fluctuate. And when you measure the iron level, it is the component that is bound to the transferrin. And only 0.1% is bound to the transferrin. And this tends to fluctuate in a day. So that's about the total iron. So when you talk about serum transferrin or total iron binding capacity, so this is a protein which is produced in the liver. The transferrin is a protein which is produced in the liver. It's a glycoprotein. And this glycoprotein is needed for the transport of iron within the blood. So this is a protein to which iron is bound and it gets transported in the blood. And total iron binding capacity reflects the amount of iron that is bound to the transferrin within the circulation. So blood stability where the iron is bound to the transferrin. And the total iron binding capacity is calculated by multiplying transferrin in milligram per deciliter into 1.389. So if you multiply 1.389 into transferrin, it gives you total iron binding capacity in micrograms per deciliter. And this transferrin can be deficient uh, in iron deficiency. So this transferrin actually tends to go up in iron deficiency because more protein is produced by the liver to bind with the iron. So it tends to go up in iron deficiency and it comes down in anemia of chronic disease. So in anemia of chronic disease, there is failure of production of this glycoprotein. So in iron deficiency, there is increased production of the protein to bind to whatever iron is left. So it tends to increase in iron deficiency, but reduces in anemia of chronic disease. So the transferrin, the third component that you would get in iron study is the transferrin saturation. So the normal level is 25 to 45%. So the transferrin saturation is calculated by iron divided by total iron binding capacity into 100. So that gives you the transferrin saturation. And it is the amount of transferrin that is bound to the iron. And it is a very good sort of a tool to look at the iron delivery to the tissues. So transferrin saturation basically indicates the amount of iron that is being delivered to the tissues. And, uh, and there is an activation of transferrin sort of a production in the liver in iron deficiency. So whenever there is 
iron deficiency so the protein production increases so that it binds to whatever iron that is there in the body so even the transferrin uh, production also gets activated within the liver in iron deficiency uh, which we discussed and in iron deficiency anemia transferrin saturation comes down so the whole saturation tends to come down so because if you look at the iron levels which tends to come down so transferrin saturation is iron divided by total iron binding capacity so tibc increases iron reduces so your transferrin saturation does come down in iron deficiency anemia so we look at the fourth component which is ferritin so i'm sure most of the listeners would be very familiar with ferritin which we do it as an inflammatory marker we used to do this in covid and this is a marker we do in viral infections so the normal levels is 15 to 300 micrograms per liter and ferritin is a sort of a protein that tends to conserve the iron stores within the cell so it is uh, the reflection of the iron stores within the body and it's a surrogate of body iron stores so basically it is uh, stored the extra iron is stored within the cell by this protein and it is a reflection of the body stores of iron that is present but the problem with ferritin is it can increase it's an acute phase reactance it tends to increase with inflammatory condition infection and it uh, does increase with certain chronic diseases like liver disease malignancy or even in heart failure so that's why looking at ferritin as a screening tool for iron sometimes can be misleading although ferritin is the right sort of a measure to look at the iron stores within the body because it is an acute phase reactant so it tends to increase with other chronic conditions uh, like what i have mentioned so which can be misleading so this is something one needs to bear in mind so so we have looked at the total iron we have looked at the total iron binding capacity we have looked at the transferrin saturation and we have looked at serum ferritin and their role in trying to uh, interpret and the way we interpret in iron deficiency but we need to have some algorithmic approach when we are interpreting iron studies so is a simple algorithm is if you have iron deficiency anemia obviously you do iron studies and iron studies first thing you look at ferritin if ferritin is less than 15 nanograms per ml or if it is less than 45 nanograms per ml with comorbidities like suppose a patient is deconditioned with signs of anemia and ferritin is less than 45 then iron deficiency is confirmed suppose if ferritin is more than 45 or more than 15 so if there is iron deficiency you have to look for any micro bleeding so obviously most of the listeners would know if you have iron deficiency confirmed you would do look at the stool occult blood to look at any leakage of the blood within the body and possibly you may subject the patient to colonoscopy or endoscopy and you have to treat if ferritin is low if suppose ferritin is normal then you have to look at transferrin saturation as the second best test because your transferrin saturation tends to come down in iron deficiency because transferrin saturation is iron divided by total iron binding capacity it is it involves components of both so tibc increases iron comes down transferrin saturation comes down so if trans so the second best test as a screening if ferritin is normal is transferrin saturation so if transferrin saturation is low yes then iron deficiency is confirmed if transferrin saturation and then obviously you have to treat and look for other what, what is the cause and if transferrin saturation is not decreased is not low then additional tests have to be done to look for other causes of anemia and other and possibly other tests to determine the cause of iron deficiency anemia so this is a simple algorithm so the essence of this algorithm is basically you look at ferritin as a first test if ferritin gives you an answer then it is iron deficiency but if ferritin is normal you can look at transferrin saturation so these are the two reliable tests to confirm your iron deficiency anemia so now having so so that on the backdrop of interpreting all those tests i think one the two things that possibly the listener should remember is a ferritin which can be relied upon followed by transferrin saturation so how do we go about treatment of iron deficiency anemia once you find you would interpret the iron studies and ferritin is low or transferrin saturation is low then it has to be treated iron deficiency has to be treated and and even uh, if iron is deficient in the absence of anemia suppose patient doesn't have anemia but iron is deficient still the recommendation is they have to be treated they have to be supplemented and this is to reduce the risk for organ damage or organ ischemia and to reduce the risk of progression of anemia 
so even if there is no anemia but iron is deficient they need evaluation and supplementation is needed and if someone is very stable possibly this is in non icu setting you can use iron tablets to correct anemia and the purpose of giving supplementation is to replenish the stores because the stores which is reflected by ferritin will be depleted so you need to replenish the stores so the iron tablets are available as ferrosulfate ferrofumarate gluconate and polysaccharide iron so you can pick any of these and treat for stable patients possibly this may not be applicable to our icu patients so in icu patients when iron deficiency is there with cardiovascular hemo instability and uh, when they are in heart failure symptoms so blood transfusion is something one could consider in acute situation i'm sure many of the listeners would be using injectables so this is considered the safest so ferric carboxy maltase so you have uh sucrose based injections as well so this is something one could consider as a treatment in a iv injectable format so 300 mg elemental iron per day has to be given and iron absorption happens at a rate of 50 mg per day goal is to replenish the iron stores uh, which is 0.5 to 1 g of iron is used as a replenishment for replenishing the stores and treatment has to be continued for 6 to 12 months if it is a oral formulation and 15 to 20% of them develop gi disturbance and compliance can be issue with oral formulation so for icu what is of relevance is so the intent is to treat an iron deficiency and to replenish the stores also so if you have to give parenteral iron so this is the formula that one has to use you have to take the patient's body weight into 2.3 into this 15 is the normal hemoglobin minus patient's hemoglobin plus 500 to 1000 mg this gives you the total amount of parenteral iron that has to be administered so the parenteral iron that is available is the iron sucrose so iron dextran can be given im as well so the dose is 20 mg per day and to be given as infusion over 6 hours so this is something uh, which possibly is not used very often as compared to the newer ones so iron sucrose is something that uh, that is used but currently we are using more of uh, so the dose is 200 mg or 500 mg over 4 hours but what we use currently and which is considered much safer is the carboxy maltose the ferric carboxy maltose uh, so the dose is 1000 mg and it has it can be given over 15 to 30 minutes so in our icu the practice is if there is iron deficiency we give this uh, ferric carboxy maltose which is available as uh, nc carb as you see so it is available as nc carb or any of the trade names so but whatever you use it is ferric, ferric carboxy maltase and uh, 1000 mg we give it over 30 minutes and then recheck the iron and then maybe you can give them one supplemental oral formulation later on but this this should not exceed more than 15 mg per kg whatever you give so 1000 mg is safe enough so the summary for all the listeners in a brief overview i think if you remember this slide that should be good enough so this as you see here you have iron deficiency anemia of chronic disease and iron deficiency due to chronic inflammation acute phase and iron overload serum iron in iron deficiency comes down anemia of chronic disease it comes down iron deficiency of chronic inflammation serum iron comes down acute phase response also it comes down iron overload it increases so this is more like mcq so total iron binding capacity it increases in iron deficiency as i said there is activation of transferrin production and there is more protein to bind with the iron so tibc goes up anemia of chronic disease it comes down iron deficiency of chronic inflammation it comes down and the acute phase response it comes down iron overload it it comes down so your transferrin saturation it is very similar so as i said transferrin saturation is the second best tool to confirm iron deficiency in iron deficiency it will come down anemia of chronic disease it comes down iron deficiency of chronic inflammation it comes down acute phase response it comes down iron overload obviously it increases so ferritin so this as you see markedly comes down in iron deficiency that's why it's used as a first screening tool anemia of chronic disease it can be normal Okay. anemia or uh, iron deficiency of chronic inflammation it can be normal or it can be slightly increased also and in acute phase response we know it is increased iron overload it increases so so if you remember this i think this should be good enough slide for you to take home 
as to what happens to all these iron studies in different. So the key thing to look at is ferritin to confirm iron deficiency. Ferritin is normal. Look at transfer in saturation because that comes down. So total iron is something that we uh, intuitively tend to look at, but try to look at now more ferritin followed by transfer in saturation, which are more uh, reflective of iron deficiency. So that's about it, folks. So thank you one and all. So end with this beautiful quote. Mistakes are painful, but as time goes by, they become a collection of experiences called lessons. So thank you one and all.